Welcome back, everybody. This story is called Snowbound. Thank you for listening. Do you need anything? My dad asked for the 23rd time. Dad adjusted the pillows on the dark leather couch, and I held my breath as he helped lower me to the couch. Lucky me. I grimaced as my legs slightly twisted, and a sharp pain shot up and down that same leg. No, Dad, I'm still fine, I said, releasing my breath and the pain. The doctor said the cast would make everything better. It did, most of the time. I asked them about a wheelchair, Dad said, but the three they have are in use. They're trying to get another one, but nobody was expecting this. The family Christmas skiing trip to the Rockies went well for the rest of my family. Not for me. My right leg had its very own cast, almost to the hip. Knee bent at an angle. It itched when I thought about it, which was all the time. I had two crutches, and no matter how we adjusted them, they were always slightly too tall. My armpits never hurt so bad. My leg ached all the time, even though the doctor said it wouldn't. He said if it did, take aspirin. I did. It still ached. My family had come to the ski resort in spite of me. Mom and Dad refused to leave me behind. We are going as a family. You've moved out and are starting your own life. This might be our last family vacation. Dad had bought me extra-large boxers to wear because my mediums had trouble going over the cast. I had extra-large, very baggy athletic shorts over that. One sneeze and everything would fall off. But it was, they were the only things that would fit over the cast. I wore an extra-large green sweatshirt that said Colorado. Dad bought me suspenders to hold my shorts and underwear up. Sus. Benders. I'm so embarrassed. At 22, I feel like I'm 52 and move like I'm 82. I'm glad nobody around here knows me because I look terrible, and that's just my clothes. I haven't had a real bath for days or a shower. I'm sure I stink in spite of all the deodorant I used. Try wrapping a garbage bag around your leg and then kind of hopping to get clean while your dad kind of holds you up in the shower. We tried that one once. Probably never again. My hair felt greasy, and when I looked in the mirror, it looked like I had permanent bed hair. I haven't shaved since the accident, and the bruising on my back hurt if I moved funny. My skin felt oily, and I could not warm up. Are you comfortable? Mom said. Yes, Mom. I didn't believe me for a moment, but Mom did. They had arranged a nest for me in the resort's lounge, propping me up with pillows. In spite of the extra thick sock on my left foot and the odd knitted thing on my right, I shivered. For all practical purposes, I wore shorts in sub-zero weather. They had found me a nice throw blanket in the gift shop, something with pine trees. It kept the worst of the cold off. Do you need anything else? Dad unfolded the blanket and wrapped me in it. Mom gave me a kiss. No, Dad, I said. I have my phone, some books, and the Wi-Fi here is really good. Go ski. We'll be gone all day, Mom said. Are you sure I can't get you anything? No, Mom. I watched them leave the lodge, relieved that they wouldn't hover over me for a couple of hours. When the door opened, a surge of cold air came in. The lodge was made of giant logs with a huge fireplace at one end. Heads of incredibly large deer and moose and elk, all with gigantic antlers, hung from every wall. The lounge had large windows on all sides and it currently was decorated with Christmas trees and red garlands and white lights, and it smelled like fresh-cut pine trees. Old Christmas music from the 1950s assaulted the airwaves. 
I'm glad I brought my phone and earbuds. My family left me in the loving care of dead animal heads and dead singers. Great. My leg is making me morbid. On the other end of the lounge was guest check-in, a restaurant, a regular bar, and a coffee bar. The fire doors led into the saunas, hot tubs, weight room, while another set of doors led to the hotel rooms. Mom and Dad had planned this trip months ago, and they paid for everything. Their Christmas present to me and my two younger sisters. I wouldn't spoil it for them. Somehow, I'd have a good time. If only my leg wouldn't ache so much, and my toes would warm up. The outer door opened, and a delivery man entered with a package. The cold air rushed in. My couch became target zero for an arctic blast. I plugged my earbuds in, found some music, and scrolled through my email. A few minutes later, a group of skiers wandered in, talking loudly. They propped the door open so they could bring in their gear. More freezing air. I swear they set this couch up in line with the door. I huddled in the blanket, but I still froze. A man, woman, and two high school boys came in next. The man surveyed the lounge, nodding slightly. Snow flurries came in with them. I had to move before all the cold air gave me pneumonia. I checked around the lounge for a better location. To my relief, I found an empty couch by the fire. Now to transport my pillows and blanket and stuff over there. On crutches. God, my arms ached. The rubbery tops of the crutches had probably pulled out all my armpit hair in the last two days, and my pits stung. I levered myself up, grabbed my leg and cast, and swung it gently over the side. Success. Not too much pain. I stood, balancing on one leg, grabbed my crutches, and wobbled to keep my balance. I moved with the speed of a ruck. A few inches at a time, I dragged the pillows over, then my phone and books. It took a minute to arrange the pillows, and I finally laid down, propping myself up as best I could. I laid the crutches by the couch so I could grab them. Then I forced myself to adjust the leg on my pillows. Okay, sharp pain, breathe. Once it faded, I relaxed in the warmth. The heat of the fire felt good and made me sleepy. I could curl up in the blanket and snore for hours. I forgot the blanket. It lay on the floor by my old couch. One more trip. God, give me strength. I lifted my leg and cast and swung them to the floor. I felt for the crutches, and while I fumbled for them, my blanket fell over me. I looked up. You look like you needed some help, the man said. Korean, I guess, about my age, and cute. Dark hair worn a little long, dark eyes that smiled, light gray pullover with hood, and real pants. His legs must be warm. I was jealous. Thanks. My arms are getting really sore, and I'm not sure I can make it over and back, I said. I'm Kevin. Ha June, he said. What happened? Three days ago, I was on an ATV goofing around, I said, rubbing my cast. It slipped somehow and rolled. I had a nice quick trip in an ambulance and an overnight stay at the hospital to make sure I didn't have a concussion. Yesterday, my parents picked me up from my apartment, and we all came here for a week. Looks like you got a nice souvenir, Ha June said, knocking on the cast a little. Let me... He arranged the pillows and angled the couch so I faced the fire. He helped me put my leg on the pillows. He shook the blanket out and draped it over my legs. I wish I didn't have a cast, I said. I can't get around, can't do anything. It makes me so frustrated. I don't blame you, Hajun said, nodding to a couch across the room. If you need anything, I'm over there. You're not skiing, I said. No, I prefer staying warm, Hajun said. Then why come here? My family skis, Hajun said. I come for the hot tubs and saunas and nice-looking guys. This place has a nice outdoor jetted tub that they keep hot year-round. You? 
Nice looking. I don't qualify. I ran my fingers through my greasy hair and hoped Hajun didn't notice my oily skin and bed hair. I ski. Well, used to. Listen, um, thanks. I really appreciate this. Anytime. Hajun went back to his couch and I pulled out my phone and played a game. The heat from the file lulled me into a quiet slumber. My legs stopped aching. My feet finally warmed up. A cute guy had talked to me. And his couch wasn't that far. I was in heaven. I guess an hour or two passed before I woke up. Young fine thing like you should be out skiing, some guy said, a slight slosh to his words. And a little groggy, I didn't realize that somebody was talking to me. Excuse me? You shouldn't be inside, he said, standing above me. It was the man who had entered with a woman and two teens. I guessed he was in his mid-forties. He had slicked back hair, and he wore a red sweatshirt with a Santa face on it. A wedding ring graced his ring finger, and he reeked of alcohol and a cheesy cologne. I'm Jake. You're all bundled up by the fire, but I know how to warm you up. Why don't you come with me and let's have a drink? No thanks, I said. I'm going to stay here. There's nothing to do over here, he said. Let's go to the bar. I'll buy you a drink and let's see where it goes. No, thank you. You're turning down a free drink? Come on. Do you prefer wine or vodka? Maybe a nice beer? No, thank you. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I didn't want to drink anything because then I'd have to find a bathroom, hobble there on crutches, balance somehow to use the urinal, I wasn't sure how I would maneuver the crutches around the toilet and the toilet stall. With my gigantic cast, with the door even closed, the man knelt next to me, placing a hand on my left eye. Don't be like that. It's just a drink. You and me. Nothing serious. Would you move your hand, please? Like this, he said, and inched his hand closer to my crotch. I wanted to punch him, but I didn't have the angle. Maybe I should scream. Instead, I pushed his hand off me. Go away. Just a drink. That's all I ask. Maybe you can tell me about yourself. I'm very interested in you. I didn't want to make a scene, but I had to do something. Go find your wife and kids. They went to the slopes. It will only be you and me, he said, trying to be seductive. We'll be alone. Nobody has to ever know. We'll have hours together. I glanced over at Hajun's couch, but he wasn't there. Some part of my stomach panicked. Get away from me, you creep. Jake actually smiled. Playing hard to get? I like it. Leave me alone. If you really wanted to, he said. You get up and walk away. Since you're not, I can only assume you'll come with me, have a drink or two, and then we'll go up to my room. Imagine you and me. I'll let you do whatever you want. That little bit of panic turned into an infestation of terror. I'm glad I haven't felt like eating much since the accident because my stomach soured. I want you to leave. I pulled out my phone and tried to figure out who I could call. The front desk? I pulled up the website, but I couldn't find the number. The man grabbed the phone from my hands. One drink. That's all I'm asking. Come keep a lonely guy company. Somehow I had to get away from this guy. I reached for my crutches. I'd set them on the floor by me, but I couldn't feel them. When Jake knelt, he must have pushed them under the couch without realizing. I tried to get up but the blanket slipped off, revealing the cast in my bare leg. The odd motion stretched the bruises on my back, and a sharp jolt shot up from the break. Breathe, breathe, breathe. It will pass in a second. The man smiled, placing his hand back on my thigh, my bare thigh. His fingers inched up under my oversized shorts. I'll bring the drink to you. What will it be? Get your hand off me. I'm not into guys old enough to be my dad. 
give me my phone back and go away. Before Jake could say anything, the aroma of hot chocolate filled the air, scented a little with peppermint. Sorry, you wouldn't believe the line. Hajun set a container next to me and winked. He turned to the man. Are you bothering my boyfriend? Babe, what's this guy doing with your phone? Giving it back, I said. I don't know when I had been so thrilled to see someone. Wait, did Hajun just call me babe? I didn't hide the smile. Whatever game Hajun played, I kind of liked it. It felt kind of like flirting. Boyfriend? We were only having a conversation, Jake said, and handed Hachun my phone. Weren't you on the other side of the room? My fault, I said, playing along. The leg makes me cranky, and we argued. Forgive me, boyfriend. Hachun smiled at me and sipped his steaming drink. I bought you the hot chocolate so you would forgive me. Kiss and make up, I said, and leaned dangerously towards him. Hajun chuckled, bent over, and gave me a nice, long, dangerous kiss. Warm, tasting faintly of chocolate. I didn't want it to end. My mistake, the married man mumbled and left. Even after he left, we kept on kissing. I think this trip just got better. Eventually, we broke apart. I said, boyfriend? Hajun sighed and dried his lips with the back of his hand. Sorry about that. It was the only thing I could think of to get him to leave. He's been making the rounds. Hit on me a little while ago. God, he's pushy. The man went to another guy reading by the fire, and I think he had the exact same conversation, except that guy didn't have a cast and walked away. Let's be boyfriends when he's around, I said. How much for the drink, and I'll pay you back. Hajun dragged a chair over, but before he took a seat, he adjusted the blanket over my legs. He fished my crutches out from under the couch. No need. I was thinking of buying it for you, sort of as an excuse to come back over and say hi. Then Mr. Player came over, so I used it to chase him away, and then come over and say hi. I'm glad you did, I said. Can I take you out to lunch? This lodge has a restaurant. Mostly burgers and fries kind of thing. I'd pay, but you'd have to go get it. Two boyfriends having a romantic lunch by the fire, Hajun said, smiling. After lunch, how about we figure a way to get you into a hot tub? Smiling, I said. Hot tubs, saunas, and nice-looking guys. Starting on your list? Some years I only get the first two. This year I've got one of the three already, and I only arrived this morning. You must have hit the hot tub first thing, I said. Not yet, Hajun nodded and pulled out a sharpie. Did I hear him right? Did he just call disgusting me nice looking without saying nice looking? I like this guy. Hajun moved the blanket enough to reveal the cast. His smile was a little bit shy, but when he looked at me, it spread across his face, warm and genuine. Mind if I sign your cast? Boyfriend. Go ahead, I said. It's the least I can do since you saved me from the creep. Hajun scribbled something on my thigh that made this whole trip worthwhile. His name and phone number.